everyone, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo! Last time, melons happened. But exactly what went, what went on behind the melons? Well, I'm not 100% sure if it can be shown on YouTube. But I'm pretty sure we all know what, what went on behind the melons. Anyway, no more talking. Let's get back into it. <laughs> the days since then have passed by so quickly that time seems to slip through my fingers like water. Every time I've tried to, tried to talk to Shizune, she has been out running errands with Misha. I feel as if she's avoiding me. Hmm. I'm not surprised. Of course it bothers me, but I think the way she's acting seems pretty natural. Then again, it's not like I've been through this before. Oh, hi, Misha. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention! Misha got a haircut! Whenever I can't find Shizune, I end up running into Misha, and when I do, I ask her to help me with my signing. However, she always ends up squirming out of it. We're leaving after today, so I'm determined not to let her escape this time. Once we head back to school, we're probably going to have to start grinding through more student council affairs in preparation for, the, for school restarting. I want to brush up on my signing as much as possible by then, even if it's a day's worth. Come on, it's pretty much just having a couple sign language conversations. You do that all the time. Actually, you're doing it right now. <laughs> really, Hee-chan? That's funny. Misha temporarily stops her unconscious signing in order to wave her hands in front of her face in denial, but then quickly resumes, resumes gesturing everything the both of us are saying to no one in particular. Jeez. Hee-chan, you're so persistent. Suddenly being interested in sign language again. Could it be that Hee-chan wants to make a career out of it? That's not fair! That was my idea first! You should be careful, Hee-chan. Times change too quickly. By the time I decided I wanted to be a sign language interpreter, they had cell phones that people could type out whole paragraphs on. It's amazing! Not very good for me, though. I mean... As if she knows that another defer deferral isn't going to cut it this time, Misha changes her tune pretty quickly to a more apologetic one. I'm sorry, Hee-chan. I'm just so tired. Especially lately. Even though being with Shi-chan is so fun, she has way more energy than me. Teaching on top of that would be too tiring. I don't have that much stamina. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> she doesn't seem very tired. Shouting the statement with her usual, usual cheer and vigor. I know it's wrong of me to keep pestering her like this, though. Actually, Shi-chan and I were planning on going shopping today. It's our last chance to pick up some souvenirs. Souvenirs, huh? I almost forgot that I was on vacation. I understand what you're saying. Teaching doesn't seem so easy. Hideaki asked me to teach him how to sign, and I was unbelievably lost the whole time. Well, I wonder how it'll work out for you when you become a sign language teacher. You, you can't get tired too easily doing that. Yeah, right, right. I hope not. Hey, John. Now I'm kind of worried. But souvenirs. So, some other time, Hey, John. <laughs> Do you want us to get you something too? Just because I understand, just because I understand, doesn't mean I don't want her to teach me. I suppose I can't press her any further now, though. Even though I'm bothered by how selfish it would seem to do so. I give up. No, don't get me anything. I'm serious. Don't surprise me with a funny share or something, okay? <laughs> She's totally gonna do it, is, is she? I wouldn't hold it against her. I don't like the sound of that. Slipping on her shoes, she yells goodbye to the otherwise empty house and opens the door to leave, laying a cool breath of fresh air into the hallway. A tuft of dark hair peeking from the door frame tells me she's only is waiting for her outside. Good morning. Good morning, Shizune. Misha translates for me from beyond the doorway, and Shizune turns around to give me a small wave. Even though it's different from her offhand greetings in the smallest ways, there is an unmistakable hesitation there. It leaves me with a vaguely empty and distant feeling. Hmm. Hey, John, you're up early. Am I interrupting a conversation? I was trying to get Misha to teach me how to talk to you, but I guess I was being impatient, and it can wait. You two are planning on going shopping anyway, 
today anyway. Having Misha there, I forget to sign my words as I say them. Unfortunately, since Shizune moved to fill the doorway, Misha is behind her. This brief if misalignment in our positions means that what I'm saying is totally lost on her. I don't understand you at all. Oops! There are things I want to say that I can't put in a way she would understand, and there are entire conversations that she could have that would go right over my head. I want to tell her now but that it won't be that way for much longer. Instead, I just say never mind and tell them to have a good time, then wave them off. Seems like everyone is out for the day, so I sit down on the biggest and most comfortable looking chair in the living room with a book. Not a slight language book, but one of the novels I checked out at the library my first week. That was so long ago. I should really start chipping at that pile of books I borrowed, or at least return them. Well... If, if you check them out, you might as well read them, right? But then again, they could all be overdue by now. Oh, hey, it's Shizune's dad! Sixteen pages in, jo Jigoro walks into the room, a stack of papers in one hand, and is toward her twirling eyelid like a baton in the other, casually shaking water from a recent shower from his hair. His long, majestic hair. Moving on! Upon being seen doing something so ungentlemanly, he freezes like a deer in the headlight. Eights, and slowly moves on to smoldering with powerful but baseless fury as he sits down on the couch a few feet away. This is only the third time I've met him, and I'm already starting to feel nauseous on reaction. I guess in a way, this could be considered a kind of charisma. I haven't even said anything, and he always seems less than pleased. It's likely a bad idea to provoke him, and just talking to him may count as provoking him. However, I can't help thinking of the alternative situations that, that could play out. Let's say I don't open my mouth at all and walk away. Maybe to go read in my room or outside. That would definitely go down as an unforgivable insult. He would probably tell me to hold in and destroy me. Either way, not too polite on my part. What are you reading? The draft for my autobiography. The draft for, for my autobiography is the story of a man who wakes up to find an uninvited guest in his living room, sitting in his chair and reading Shadow Literary Drek. Hey! This is not Shadow Literary Drek! This is... Okay, you got me. It's Twilight. I fairly started reading the book. I don't even have an opinion on it yet. I mean... I haven't actually read Twilight, so... Oh, I'm not really one to talk. I TAKE BACK THE JOKE I MADE EARLIER! I can already see how this conversation is going to play out, so I might as well try to steer it in a different direction. Where is Hideaki? You even ask questions rudely. Disgraceful. That aside, why are you even asking me such a stupid question? How would I know? Am I my son's keeper? Well, you are his father. But Hideaki's an his own person, so... I guess you got a point. Well, you are his dad, and he... And it seems like he does live here, so... I mean... But I guess I can't say that. That's it, tempting as it is. But I mean, I said it! Well, I said the part here to where... He is his dad. Anyway. I give up! I already tried to make small talk with him, and failed! It's like trying to talk to a brick wall that also hates you. That is my cue to leave and sift through my wallet to see if I have enough money to go to a movie. As I'm about to stand, I have second thoughts. I'm too tired to go through trying to smooth over my problematic situations by trying to continuously walk away from them. It's hypocritical of me to get upset at Misha for trying to defer things when I even run for my own girlfriend. When Jigoro attempts to stop me, I'm almost glad, even though I no longer have any intention to leave. Wait! He says it with, with plenty of, a, of authority, but nothing else. As if it's just a particular commanding afterthought. Only a very powerful or very arrogant person can tell someone to hold it in such a manner. I'm sort of impressed. 
You are in the student council with Shizune, aren't you? What is your job there? I don't think there are specific roles other than president. Shizune is always trying to round people up to help out here and there. Usually we get like one person to pitch in, but otherwise the three of us do whatever needs to be done. It's crossed my mind a couple times around when I first met her that Shizune's disquietingly analytical figure might be the cause of her deafness. But it turns out it's a trick aid shared by everyone else in everyone else in her family. And that is okay with you? Why wouldn't it be? You, Shizune, and that pink haired girl? Is that really your entire student council? Hey, it may not be much, but it's my student council! With a student council that small, they wouldn't even bother to hold elections! I am going to take a guess and say that you didn't join the student council, Shizune drafted you into it. Well, I wouldn't say you're wrong. You said you do not know exactly what your title is. That makes sense. I suppose if you aren't even elected, you couldn't be expected to know. After all, if you are not elected, you aren't really anything. Jeez. No one is going to respect a student council like that. An unelected body of three people trying to scrounge up the equivalent of temp workers. It must be a, start, a sorry school of three kids having a tea party can handle every issue. Jigaro. Just... Stop talking. Please. I'm begging you. Stop... Talking. What's how small it is have to do with anything? If the student council gets things, gets things done, isn't that enough? He sell. You tell him. It's not just a game either. Maybe you should actually come to the school one day. If you get there on the right days, you might even be able to see what Shizune is able to accomplish. Do you think I have so much free time that I can afford to waltz over to your boondocks and watch my daughter's feats of self-helping grandizement? I have never, never been more disgusted in my life. Dude. What you're saying is, they might as well not have a student council, but the fact remains there is one. And she's when they got elected to it, and for her, it isn't a meaningless position. In fact, she works very hard for it. Yeah, you tell him! You, de you defend your girlfriend! You sound like someone who voted for her. Well, I didn't necessarily vote for her. No, I wasn't there for that. You didn't even vote for her. Well, besides that, why don't you ask Hideaki about this? Shizune has wanted to be a high school student council president since middle school. She would have him read all of her practice speeches, wasting his time. For what reason? Hmm. This whole time, he hasn't even looked up from thumbing through his manuscript. It's getting increasingly frustrating. Because it isn't a game. We don't run the school, but it's not like we're just playing at it and not taking it seriously. I wonder if it is so wrong not to, to not be a purist. I have been to your school. Really? The students there! I can think about, of about a million things he might say, and I'm preparing for my heart to sink on hearing any of them. It's funny, they are probably things I've thought before. They don't even have cleaning duty! Of all the things that you could say. That was not what I expected at all. He's also wrong. They do. I should know. I get to skip out on it since I'm in the student council. The concept of being wrong confuses Jigoro. I should take this opportunity to go on the attack. It's really odd that I am thinking this way about a simple, con simple conversation. It sounds like the last time you were there was really some time ago. If you can leisurely write some memoirs, you can talk to Shizune now and then. Don't you think she has stuff that she is proud of? Yeah, be a father! That's how young people are. We have things to be proud of. If you're writing an autobiography, you should get that. Such an opportunity, and I blew it. I don't know how I was expecting him to react. Maybe introspectively, but Jigoro only grows angrier by the second. Yet, yeah, as he does, he also seems calmer in a way. 
more sure of himself and in control. I'm just gonna go with it. Who do you think you are to assume my life is so easy? You haven't even read my biography, yet you were able to you tell me that how I should handle my affairs, including dealing with my own daughter. You can never understand. If you never were to get up from this couch, walk over to you right now and punch you in the forehead with brass knuckles with a content this edition of my life story on them, leaving my biography pr imprinted in your face, you would not understand. For 12 years, Shizune did not even talk to me, even though I hired multiple tutors and interpreters of all sorts for her to try to get her, and get her to become normal. It isn't as simple as you think it is. I have... <sighs> I have no words for you, Jigoro. I mean... I really want to point out that she's deaf, but... I'm just... Probably just going to take some people off if I just point that out. If she does not want to bother with me, then fine. I assume that is normal. When was the last time you talked to your parents? It has been a while, and I feel ashamed. More so that he caught me than and how easily I could have dropped my parents a phone call or sent them an email, or even a letter, and haven't. This knowledge only makes me feel more ashamed. I thought so. If I wanted to see my parents, I couldn't. This is different. You aren't that far from her. It's only one trait in right away. That's enough. No means no. You are very persistent. If only it was about something that mattered. I can't see why you, you may have learned from my daughter aside from that and how to backtalk people. Is that it? The answer is yes. I wasn't this persistent or argumentative for me and she's your name, Misha. After all, prior to meeting them, I just experienced a small death. It's a mystery as to why I refused to join the student council in the first place. Possibly it was from trying to get away from the nagging so much that I was able to get my energy back. It's a cute idea. I think again about why I'm still here. Arguing with Jigoro is pointless, yet I think I almost look forward to it. And he is right. I cannot understand him. Even if I did, he wouldn't care. I am a louse that crawls on a whale. Wholly insignificant. He has a confidence that I don't have. She certainly does, and it could be the reason why I'm here now, and almost shouting match with her father, is because some of that bravery has rubbed off on onto me. However, I don't have anything to keep it going. Still, I hate him. I don't know what I can do. A few months ago, I think I would have punched him and let the consequences play out as they may. But now I can't risk it. If he were to hit me back, he'd likely kill me. So, you want me to punch him for you? Nah, he'd probably kill me too. So, in the end, the only thing I can do is look, Chikoro in, look at Chikoro in silence, knowing that I have no reply, and hate him, and feel completely at a loss. Oddly, he takes it as defiance. <laughs> Fine then, have fun with that. Picking up his sword and using it to pull himself to his feet, he turns and casually saunters out of the room. I want to throw my book after him, but I'm happy to finally be alone, even if I'm not in the mood to read any longer. TRANSITION! And we're back to the academy! Our return trip to the school gets getting delayed in one way or another. She's really and Misha come back so late that th there's no use even leaving, and we end up staying another day. The morning after, we miss the train by a single minute, and then the next two don't arrive. We miss the fourth train because I wandered off to get a drink in the meantime. She's really wasn't very happy about it. That's some terrible luck. By the time I finally get back to my room, I feel so tired, even though I spent most of the ride back sleeping. I can't say it's only because of today. 
This seems like a familiar symptom of traveling. It's not the first time it's happened. Good night! If no one has beaten me to it, I could do a thesis on it. Maybe get in a medical journal. Returning from a trip syndrome. Not very creative. I fall asleep before I can think of a better name. Uh, hello? A loud knock on, the, on my door wakes me up only a few hours into my nap. I'm annoyed because I had just been in the middle of a dream that I can't remember, having been woke up, woken up in the middle of it. But I'm sure it was a good one. I briefly, I briefly wonder who it could be, but it's not like I get many visitors, so I'm sure it's Kenji. I hope he is just rolling out the wel welcome wagon and not going to hit me up for money again. And if that was the case, I'd almost be touched. Not touch enough to fight off the urge to roll over and go back to sleep, though. <laughs> A few hours after that, I wake up again and immediately spot an envelope on the floor. It must be something that came in the mail while I was away. That's she's in Amisha's department, so I wonder if they dropped by to give it to me, or maybe someone filled in for them in their absence and Kenji to and told Kenji to pass it along. When I pick it up, any remnants of sleepiness in me instantly vanish. Even if the name of the sender wasn't on it, I would have known whom it was from by looking at the envelope itself, realizing why it looks so familiar, by recognizing the delicate handwriting addressing it. It's from... You will not go. The girl from the beginning of the habitual novel. The one he saw likes. Oh dear. At first I can't believe it. But it wouldn't be too hard for her to track me down if she wanted to. Of course, I hadn't thought that she would want to. She was maybe my girlfriend for all of five seconds. After that, we barely spoke to each other. It'll be too easy to put this letter away somewhere and forget about it. A part of me wants to do that. Or throw it away, unread. Why I want to do these things, I don't know. It would be easy to do them. Easier than to read it. Sling the envelope open with the tip of a pen, I'm surprised by the length of the letter that spills out. Oh, we're reading it. Dear Hisao, how are you? I hope you are well and happy at your new school. Everyone here misses you. Almost all of our second year class got put together in class 3-1 for the final year, so we are pretty comfortable right from the beginning of the year. I'm sure you would have been assigned to this class as well. Thank you. The mood among the third year seems to be very anxious about the final exams. Even though they are so far away, the teachers are badgering about, badgering us about it all the time. Even old Mr. Tachibana, who is, by the way, our homeroom teacher this year. Would you believe it? I was sure that he'd retire after a second year, but here he is, nagging everyone about studying for exams. I think things like that are the main reason why the mood among the third years is so nervous. I must admit, I'm somehow losing confidence in myself as well. Even though I've... Always fared reasonably well in exams. Oh. The small talk makes me feel nostalgic. It's almost like I'm in the hospital again. Every now and then, Iwanaku would drop by and give me the gist of what was going on in a class that, even then, I had an inkling that I would never return to. It's so weird to think that we are already seniors, isn't it? Time has really flown past. I wonder where it went. But a new ver- First year seems so young and somehow really innocent. I keep wondering if I was like them in my first year. I've been feeling nostalgic like this for the whole first trimester. There are other things I want to say. I'm writing to you because I felt that there were things I should have said after the incident back in winter. I really regret that I wasn't able to say them in person, and I have no excuse for it. The truth is, the times when they visited you at the hospital made me worried about you. I'm not talking about your health. You seem to become more distant and disheartened. It was natural after something like that happened, I'm sure. But somehow, I got the feeling that you had given up on something back then. Happiness, maybe? 
I wanted to somehow express my feelings, but the right words didn't come to me. I couldn't say anything to comfort you. I am really sorry for not being able to support you when it mattered most, even though I like you so much. At least now, finally, I can be more honest. What a convenient time for her to rediscover her sincerity! Well, even as I think that, I know she's right. Distant and disheartened is a good way to describe it. And maybe I had given up too. It weighs on my heart when I think back to when I was lying in the hospital, feeling so bitter when she finally stopped showing up. I wasn't surprised, and I had no right to be. How could she not stop coming when it was the only expectation, expectation I had of her? She's dropped by hey, only for all of six weeks after the incident. I drifted away from her. It was because I could feel her already moving herself away from... If I, if I drifted away from her, it was because I could feel her already moving herself away from me the moment she showed up. If I could go back to those quiet days in February and March, I'd tell you not to give up on yourself. That's what I would say. Maybe if it, you wouldn't ha maybe you wouldn't have drifted so far away if I had just said something. I hope you've managed to get back on your feet on your own. Now that the physical now that the distance between us is also physical, it also feels more final somehow. I wonder if we will meet again. Perhaps it's for the best if we don't? Still, if you would like to correspond with me, by all means write me back. I'd very much like to hear about your new school and how you are doing. I wish I wish you all the best. Sincerely, Iwanako. Iwanako. Well, it's it's nice for her to send a letter, but it's a strange feeling. I know that I'm never going to hear from her again. If she really wanted to keep in touch, she wouldn't have picked a medium like sna a medium like snail mail to do it through. If she could get my address, then my email or phone number wouldn't have been much more work had she wanted them. This is only a goodbye. I exhale, only just now becoming aware that I have been reading with bated breath. Now who's being distant, Iwanako? But maybe it really is for the best. For her to pick up a pen and write this letter to me, it can only it can only be because she felt guilty about things ended, about how things ended, that she was hurt by how we floated out of each other's lot. How we floated out of each other's lives makes me feel a, a sort of wistful happiness. I almost want to thank her, and I only don't because I know she wouldn't want me to reply. Oh dear, here we go again. There's a knock at my door, then it opens anyway about a millisecond later. I forgot to lock it, stupidly. Stop, man! Why is your door open? Why are you ruining the mood, Kenji? I run to the door faster than it's probably medically safe for me to do so. Oh, so I can prevent Kenji from seeing the mountains of pills just a couple feet away from him, blocking blocked from his sight only by the door. Then there's the letter I'm holding. If he asks about it, I don't think I can make up anything convincing. About two feet away from him, I realize that his vision is so bad that it was probably never an issue. He didn't even see me about how to practically tackle him back, back through the door frame. Hey, what the heck, man? What are you talking about? Your room has a million has a billion locks on it, yet you just barge right through pe other people's doors. You didn't even wait a second after knocking before you tried the door. It was like simultaneous. You were already opening the door while you were knocking on it. See, that's exactly why I have all those locks. It's a cold and uncaring world out there. A gatecrasher's world. Now you also understand. I just taught you a valuable lesson, dude. Knowledge is power. Why are you yelling at me? I'm a hero! Look at you. Do you even lock your door? The average woman could have killed you a billion times already and replaced you with a female clone indistinguishable from the original. It almost happened to me. Hey, ignoring the latter part, since it's too confusing, it's funny you should say that. He was unable to stop me from tackling head-on, yet apparently a woman could have killed me a billion times. If this man is a hero, we are all doomed. What's that you've got there? Uh, nothing? Somehow he is able to see the letter still in my hand. With how I've been waiting around, that is no surprise. I pulled it back, back up quickly, but take care not to whip it behind my back or anything else. That would be too suspicious. 
It seems like I'm jumpier than I thought about Iwanaku writing to me. I got a letter. Oh yeah, I put that there. I was sleeping, then I woke up because I heard explosions. I played up on my helmet and peeked outside to see what was going on. But it was that just that student council woman banging on your door. It was the one without pink hair. She was knocking so loudly that it was obvious she was filled with murderous rage. Rage at you. Then she somehow sends me behind her and I tried to escape, but it was too late. She caught me and started pointing at the door. I opened my mouth to tell him that she's deaf, but decided not to. For various reasons. I didn't really get it, and she got more and more ticked off, like an old man trying to touch a touch, touch, touch screen phone. She was going to kill me. Kill me and replace me with a woman version of me. But then the sunlight reflected off my glasses and, and blinded her, her, saving my life. It was like, behold, optic blast. I don't get how someone with glasses can be hurt by glasses. She uses them too. She should be immune, immune to their death rays. But whatever. She gave me this envelope with your name on it and just left. Clearly she was out for blood, so I lied and said you were away. I think you were away, right? I've been trying to ask you if you wanted to help me with my homework for a week now, but I kept getting no answer. Welcome back, man! Uh, thanks! Yeah, so she gave me this envelope and it had your name on it. I didn't want to hold on to it because what if it was a bomb? So I just shoved it under your door when she was gone. I was going to tell you, but you got back before I could. At least it's not a bomb. Gee, thanks. I'm not going to help you out with your math homework because what if your math textbook is a bomb? He looks devastated and also like he's considering the possibility that it really could be a bomb. I guess it is possible since no one really uses their math book all that much. I throw the letter on the dresser behind me and turn to leave, swinging the door shut behind me as I do. It collides against the tip of Kenji's shoe and bounces back open while he hops around for a bit, but trying to act and acting like it hurt way more than it should have. Before I know it, he's already inside my room. I'm powerless to stop him before he scoops up the letter, strangely ignoring the towers of bottle poles surrounding it. Don't just read mail that isn't your own! Come on, what is it? A love letter from your girlfriend? Did she include any photos? Sexy photos? Recording a desk dresser and paying no mind to the balls he sends all over the floor by doing so, Kenji quietly reads through Iwanako's letter. Oh dear. The process takes seemingly forever, and with how close he holds it up to his face, makes it looks like makes it look like he's trying to eat it. Who's Iwanako? My ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend, huh? This is the breakup letter then. I thought they were a myth. No, I guess it is, but really, she's been my ex-girlfriend for a while. Anyway, I think I'm already over it. Kenji gives a thumbs up, clearly relieved that I'm not going to take this into an awkward direction, although I almost want to since I told him not to read it. Yeah, that's a good attitude. It's alright, I had a bit, I'd break up too, but you can't let it get you down. I mean, just look at me! Uh... But hey, she wrote you a letter. Maybe she wants to get back together, huh? It says right here, write her back. You should do it. Is she cute? For a guy who thinks feminists are working to enslavement in anywhere, he really is interested in cute girls. I have a girlfriend. Besides, look at the context. She doesn't want me to write back. Just because that's what it says, that isn't what she means. But that's what she wrote. This rockfish kid chick totally still wants you. He even says it right there. I read it. I know what it says. I told you. You have to look at the context. She said I drifted away from her, and everything there shows she accepted that. I think the reason she wrote to me was that she wants to, I guess, part amicably. But we're done. She doesn't want to get back together or whatever you're thinking. As I think about it more, it sounds to me like I'm just trying to make excuses for myself. That's not a good place to be. I'm positive that she doesn't want me to write her back. I can live with that. If I were to write her back and get a less than des desirable response, or no response, then I would just be crushed. Understandable. Perhaps the fear of that is why I'm trying to justify my decision. It could be, but I don't want to think about it. The thought is oddly repulsive. Why is it such a big deal to you anyway? Because you should write back to her. She wants you to. I would see what the, what the response is going to be. Dang, it doesn't even have to be a nice letter. That's cool too, but you can write an angry letter and call her out. 
That's my new attack strategy. I'm just going to call women out. You should try it. Even if you owe me a letter, you have to understand what that means. Writing someone a letter is different now. It's not something you just do. Not in this kind of situation. You can pick up your phone and call someone across the world in an instant and talk to them almost like they were there with you. Or send them an email. They'll be notified instantly that they got it and, reply and can reply back just like that. A letter can be a personal thing, but she wanted me to keep it but she wanted to keep me at an arm's distance. It's not like I can and pop over there and visit her. If I had her number, I could call her. Or if I had her mail, I could mail her. If she really wanted to hear back from me, she would have just dropped those in there. One of those in there. I feel silly for continuously reassuring myself that I'm not phased by you and not go writing to me. When it's so obvious that I am! It could be like a gradual thing for her. She might be too shy to call you up. I remember my girlfriend would always send me text messages because she was so sh shy. It was annoying as heck, man! I don't really give a crap about phones, so I don't have a thing. And it turns out I had to pay for every single one. But I don't like phones, so I couldn't even call her back. I had to tell her to cut that out. I did it anyway, though. I called her out. I even used a phone. It was literally the call out. I guess it was. Even if he's right, it means that you and Uncle still wants to keep her distance from me. She's not ready to chat with me comfortably. Why? Am I some kind of freak? I'm not reassured by her actions anyway, in that case. Maybe I am overthinking it, but I just don't know. Kenji can't think of anything to say to that, and the silence that follows is so awkward and thick that he starts to count the seconds until he makes up a reason to leave and excuses himself. I miss her. Your ex? Yeah. Even if she was insane, it was nice being with her. My back hurts. If she were still around, I could tell her to massage it. I don't know how to use an oven either. I miss fake food. And we would go bowling in the hallway sometimes. I miss that too. I had to bowl all by myself during the last festival. You bowl in the hallway? You're going to hit someone. She used to say that all the time. Kenji sighs nostalgically, clearly not appreciating just how badly someone can get hurt by slipping on a bowling pin. Apparently, neither did his girlfriend, since she bowled with him. What well, a strange definition of love, but I guess it's something. Maybe she you should write her a letter. If she writes back, you can get married. Married? No. No, 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 no. No. Okay, fine, but why not? You clearly like her, even though you hate women. Feminists. Not women. Feminists. There's a difference. There are non-feminist women. Dang, your discrimination is incredible. Correlation doesn't equal causation. Even if she is insane and a woman, it doesn't mean she's a, a feminist insane woman. Woman? I mean... I guess that's true, but... I'm not sure if really wants to talk. It's like how the absence of evidence isn't the evidence of absence. If it's true, then by the relative property, the presence of evidence doesn't equal the evidence of presence. Actually, I think it is. And I don't think it's called the relative property. No, shut up. It's mathematics. Are you saying math is wrong? I think he is wrong. And I am inclined to, and I am inclined to, to agree. So even Kenji has someone he likes. I am tempted to ask why and he and his ex broke up, or to dig for information, more information in general, but I shouldn't. Not only would it be prying, but he might reverse the question back to me. This conversation makes me think about Shizune, although the thoughts I'm having are scattered and wispy. Just... questions. I wonder if I even had the chance to love you or not go, and this whole situation with her still stings me. A sour note in the back of my mind. I like Shizune much more, yet it feels like I am chasing her even now. I don't mind the chase, but I want to close that distance between us. Iwanako's letter is responsible, but I've also felt this way for a while. I'm I've come closer, but it's not enough. I want to try again, right now. I tell Kenji to get out so I can change, then head for the student council room. <sighs> You know, I think we're going to do this next time. My throat kind of hurts right now 
because I was recording not only this, but some things for some other things, both today and yesterday, so my throat could use a bit of a break. So, anyway, if you like this video, no, no, no. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want more of my content. And that being said, thank you all for watching and see ya in the next one. Yep, see ya.